Uh, just hold on to those. All right. And I found this little number trick that you, you don't need a paper for or anything, just in your head. Okay? You ready? It's going to be amazing. All right, you should have done that by now. Okay. And two. So far, so good? Okay. Subtract the number you started with. <laughs> All right, so subtract the number you started with. Why is it such a silly trick? Because it's easy. Well, because numbers going to change. Huh? Numbers going to change. Okay. You added 7. Yeah, I mean, it's very, very not sneakily, I made you add 7. Oh. Take away the number you had. Of course, you're going to be left with 7. It's not a very yeah. tricky trick. I had well, I had 7. Then, you started yeah, with 7? I had 5. Well, that's going to happen to anybody who picks 7. Five. But you're still going to wind up with 7. So, you know, this control place here is just troll, 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 silly, troll, silly troll, troll, trick. But we did a trick that stopped with the singing about a troll. <laughs> uh, all right, so we, I gave you this last time, right? You were supposed to do as we did in class, write an expression for it, simplify it down, and see what this trick does, what it leaves you with, okay? So I'm going to check your homework. I'll see how much effort you guys put into it. If you did put in a, a good amount of effort, then it should be a good discussion. If not, it'll just be me telling you things. Okay? So how can we write an expression that represents these steps? Come on, no need shy now. Josie? Well, first of all, you write down the numbers in the order they happen with the signs of what they happen, like multiplying, adding, and dividing, and subtracting, and all that. Okay, so tell me how to do that. Like I'm going to write it right here. Five. You have your number, so I'll put the variable in there. Like A, X, whatever you would like. Okay, I'll choose A, you said it first. Plus five. Uh-huh. Times two. Just like this? Yeah, and then you'll add parentheses and stuff later. Later, okay. Plus six. Okay. Divided by two. Like this? Yeah. Okay. And then subtract eight. Okay. So... First of all, you have to put big gigantic parentheses around the A plus 5. Why is that? Because order of operations is making multiply 2 first. So if I didn't have parentheses, then 2 times 5 would come first. Yeah. But we want the number plus 5 to come before yeah. multiplying by 2. So parentheses is exactly and then the right tool for that you job. Have to, mm -hmm. uh, then next, you have to oh. close the rest. Where? Uh, between the six and the two. Between the six and this two? Yeah. Or this two? The other two. Yeah, that one. Put in what kind of parentheses? Well, uh, this is open, this is closed. So which one? Is it open or closed right here? Well, what are you trying to do? Here. I agree, we need some parentheses here. Yeah. Because if we don't, then we're going to have a 6 divided by a 2. That's not part of it. It doesn't say 6 divided by 2. All this stuff comes before yeah. that, right? So how do we make that happen with parentheses? Put, put the 6 in the other parentheses. Before the other parentheses? Yeah. OK, so we have an open, right? Open is like beginning the parentheses. Mm -hmm. And then close, we close the phrase that's in the parentheses. Mm -hmm. OK, any other parentheses needed? That'll get the job done? Yeah. Just double check. Take a number, add five. When you're done with that, multiply by two. So far, so good. Add six. Yes, that would be OK, picking right back up where we left off. Uh, we're going to add these numbers first, then multiply by two, then add six, then divide by two, subtract eight. Make sure to use parentheses so that, that all gets done in the right order according to the order of operations. OK? Which order of operations? The one we use. The one we use. Beautiful answer. We use it. Other people don't have to use it. It's not the right one. It's not the wrong one. So just the one that we use. We're using it. Okay. 
now that we've written this, which is a really fantastic first step, like half of the work is done now. What we need to do now is simplify this thing so that the magic behind this is really obvious, okay? What we should wind up with is the number that we started with, yeah. okay? So let us go about proving that, all right? How can we do that? Essentially, we're just gonna simplify it, clean it up, until it looks like something that would obviously be whatever number you plugged in. Well, first you gotta choose a number. No, you do not. Are you saying that maybe because you can't add A and 5? Yeah. yeah. You can't. You can't add A and 5. If you add A and 5 and get 5A, five you're in big, big trouble. It is not even close to the same thing. If I take A plus 5 and I just put 5A, I've made a horrible, horrible mistake. Okay? What does this mean, A plus 5? A plus 5. Yeah, it's hard to say what it means. It's, that's what it means. But what does 5A mean? Five times a. Is A plus 5 the same as 5 times A? No. Of course it's not. Okay. So you would be astonished at how often I see that mistake. So how do we do this? How do we take something we cannot add together, add it together, and multiply by 2? Make it a number. Nope. Don't have to make it a number. What did you do? 2 times 5 and 2 times A? Yes. Uh -huh. It's a thing called a distributive property. Okay. I will show you why this is the same. You should really, you should be skeptical of things when you see them. You shouldn't trust teachers so much. You should be skeptical. You should say to yourself, okay, I got A plus five times two. I can't add A and five, but you're telling me that A plus five parentheses times two is the same as two A plus two times five, which is 10, right? Yes. You should not believe that until you can be absolutely sure. Okay, I'm going to show you right now, actually. I'll show you right now. But that absolutely has to be the same as this, okay? So the way I'm going to do it is use that rectangle that I used from before. Do you remember that rectangle we used to show multiplication? Yes? Yeah. So we can use a rectangle to show multiplication. What about a, tr what about a rectangle shows multiplication of two numbers? A good answer. I forgive you because you gave a good answer. Okay, so let's take this rectangle and I will prove to you that this is the same as this. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make this side two. All right, so if I put two here and I put a plus five here, then the area will be two times a plus five, right? Yeah, okay, the way I'm gonna show a plus five is, uh, I don't know what A is, so we're gonna have to use our imaginations a little bit, okay? We're gonna say that from here to there is A. The thing you have to imagine, the thing you have to let go of, is that I could measure this and I would know how big A is. Can I know how big A is? No. I don't even know what A is. I haven't picked it yet, right? So this is real fuzzy. It just represents A, A being any number, okay? So don't think, you can measure it and say, well, if this is two, this looks like it's a one and a half. A is one and a half. That's not the point here. Are you still on board there? Yep. On board. Okay. So this will be A, right? If I put five here, then is this side A plus five? Yeah. Right? Base, uh, base and height of this rectangle, the height is clearly two. The base is at A plus five. Well, this is A, right? If it were seven, let's say it was seven. Well, seven plus five would be 12, and that would be the base, correct? Agreed? So this can be done with any number that you plug in for A. Whatever it is, add to five, you have the base. So far so good? The area of this big rectangle represents two times A plus five, just like that says right there. But you can see this rectangle is now how many rectangles? Two. Two rectangles. What's the area of this rectangle? A. Two times whatever A is, is the area of this rectangle. What's the area of this rectangle? Ten. Two times five, ten. You see? This multiplication, this area can help us see the distributive function. What if it was A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus five? That would be a lot of rectangles. It would be a lot of rectangles. That's not an insignificant thing to say. This is what, there would be a rectangle here and here and here and here and here. And what would get multiplied by all of those? If you want to find all the areas? Two. Two. 
So the distributive property works not only for two terms, but three terms or four terms or an infinite number of terms. How many terms are in the parentheses being added together? Okay. All right. Great. We're doing great. So that's the distributive property. That's the way that we can we can multiply parentheses by something else when inside the parentheses we cannot add these things together. We can distribute the multiplication to both of these things. All right, then we have a plus six, the whole thing being, instead of divided by two, could I write multiply by one half? Yeah. Divided by two, multiply by one half is the same mm -hmm. thing. Multiply by one half, and subtract eight. Am I gonna take the eight from the one half? No. no. What do I do with the one half? Multiply by everything, everything in the parentheses. Now I can completely legally and, and truthfully uh, and accurately multiply the one half by everything in here, just like we talked about the distributive property doing. But it made it a little shorter, a little easier. What could I do inside the parentheses first? Great. Uh, yes, I add 10 6. Can you? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, so there's this thing called the associative property of addition. You might be saying, well, I can't add them until I add these two because they're on the left, right? Addition from left to right. But the associative property says if I'm adding three things, it does not matter if I add the last two things or the first two things or the first and the last thing. It's all the same. But only, these are the only ones that can go together because they're both just numbers. So we have 2a plus 16 times 1 half minus 8, right? And here, just like before, we can do what with the 1 half? Distribute it. 1 half to the, so what's 1 half times 2 times a? 1a. 1a, which is, we could just call it a, right? 1 times a is a. You don't have to write 1 times a. 1 half times 16? 8. Now, the magic. We have it's not so magic, is it? No. Yeah. It's kind of like this trick, kind of lame. I just had you do, really just add seven, then take your number, of course you're left with seven. Here, I say take your number, do a bunch of stuff that's the same as adding eight, and then take eight away. What are you left with? A. Okay? See? That, what we're learning there, without really calling it what it is, is we're simplifying Algebraic. Why is it called algebraic? It has letters. It has letters and it representing numbers. That's what algebra is. Okay, pretty basic idea. Simplifying algebraic expressions. Okay, if we're being really strict mathematicians here. We're not solving. We're not uh, solving is probably what I hear the most. We're not solving, and this is not an equation. We're not solving an equation, which is something that I would hear a lot. We're simplifying the expression. An expression is not an equation. An equation is not an expression. What would I need for this to be an equation? An equal, equal sign. It doesn't get any simpler than that. Okay. So we're simplifying just an expression. <coughs> if I take one expression and another expression and I say they're equal to each other, now I have an algebraic equation. And now I'm saying they're equal to each other. And then I can figure out what A is, but we won't worry about that right now. Okay. So, if anybody ever tries to pull one of these on you, realize all they're doing is just kind of, in a sneaky way, having you do stuff and undo the stuff, right? And you can use the algebra, write down the steps to the telling you, use the parentheses, simplify it down, and say, oh, look, all you're doing is having me add eight and take eight away. That's silly, right? So, still fun to play around with number tricks and have somebody, you know, tell you, do this, do this, do this, do this, and you wind up with this number, and you say, oh, that's cool. The fun part's going to be doing the algebra and seeing, ah, I, I see what you did there. And you can take this, right, this could be your starting point, and back up to here, and create your own number tree. As long as the stuff that you do here just gets all undone, and you wind up just doing something and taking it away. Yeah? How did the one with uh, your birthday work? Like, well, yeah, we can definitely look at that. Um, mm, uh, let's do that one, okay? So that was, if I can find a slide with it on there, that's not it, but it might be in here somewhere. Yeah. There it is. All right, let's write an expression for it and see what's going on. Uh, no, wait a minute. 
Yeah. Okay. Pick a number from two to nine. That's going to be represented as what? Variable. The variable. Let's call it x. Then we'll double it. How do we show that? Times two. Then we'll add five. Okay. Multiply by fifty. Should I be doing a little more than writing just dot fifty? <coughs> Around what? Here. Five and two. I want this step to come first, but it's addition, and the, the order that we use is, well, we multiply 50 by 5. So we use parentheses, we make it go out of order like that. Um, let's pretend we've had our birthday, so we're going to add 1765. And then, uh, who's had their birthday this year? Okay, Johnny, what, what year were you born? 2003. 2003. All right, so now we're going to see why this going to tell Johnny his number that he picked and then his age. Okay? So let's clean it up. What is something that we could do to simplify this expression? We've done it every time, Josie. Distribute can 50 distribute. to what's in the Right. So what's 50 times 2x? 50 uh, times 2 times x. 100 times x. Multiply by 2 and then multiply by 50. Really the same as multiply by 100. Plus 50 times 5, 250. Plus 1765 times 2003. This is important, right? I mean, it's the year that you were born that's clearly having something to do with finding your age, right? So, what do we get here? You tell me. You're adding in your head, I'm impressed. It would be a bad idea to just apply a calculator, yeah? Or is it, is it 2015? Now, did you add it together and got that, or? And you weren't sure, or you were just saying, is it 2015? Because I think it should be 2015. I think it should be. Why do you think it should be 2015? Because that's the year that it is right now. And, and if you take that yeah. minus 2003, that's your age. Right. Pretty simple calculation, right? If I subtract the year that I was born from the year that it is right now, that's how I would calculate my age. So I like that this logic, it should be 2015, because if I subtract 2003, from 2015, it's just telling me how old Johnny is. Okay. Oh. He's had his birthday this year, and it's 2015. It's been whatever the difference between 2015 and 2003, that many years since Johnny was born. <coughs> Plus 100x. So this is no longer very mysterious. It's just 2015, the present year, minus the year that you were born. That's how old you are. How about 100 times x? Yeah? That's how you get your number. Explain that a little more. Like, you know how you picked a number? Yep. The number is x. So 2 through 9, I pick a number. That's your number times 100. So it's, that's what you pick for every 400 and yeah. 13. When I multiply by 100, how do I multiply by 100? Just super fast in my head. Just put two zeros on the end. Will that work for any number? What about 12? 12 times 100? 1,200? 1,200? Put yeah. two zeros at the end? Yeah. <coughs> So now we're seeing, do I even need 2 through 9? Could I use 13? Yes. 14, yeah, that would work. Because what, I, what, I, what I'm seeing here is I'm just multiplying by 100. It's just making room for the two zeros. So when I add an age, right? If I take, I can see I'm just going to have x, 0, 0. And when I add an age, what kind of a number is an age? How many digits are in it? Two, two digits. So I add an age in here, and I'll get no interference from these zeros, right? No carrying or anything will happen because there's just two zeros, nothing in the way. But is there somebody that this wouldn't work for then, since we're seeing that these just slip into these two places? Yeah. yeah. If they're over 100, now we've got a problem, right? And so it just adds one to the hundreds place of whatever the number is, and it messes it all up. OK. Cool? Does that explain it, Sean? Yeah. Right? Algebra just explains little everything. Your whole life. Okay, period two, here we go. Let's see how much of this we can see before we have to go. It'd be so sad.
has? And it really triangle, helps you paper. <clears throat> what did she do with it? The angles of the triangles and how they all fit together. Cut it in pieces and then did what with it? Make yeah. it right. Put them together. Did she make a right triangle? It's hard to see, it's a little blurry, but these are just torn edges, okay? Just the edges are torn off of the <coughs> triangle. So why don't you do that right now, just take yours. If you have scissors, you can cut it or you can just tear it. So you just cut it and you take the, the all three angles and you just put them together like that, all in one place, just kind of pointing at each other. She's got two different triangles in case that's confusing at all. She's got a whole triangle in which she's cut up. Just cut the, cut the angles off of your triangle. If you were to cut your triangle like this, just like in from the, the sides like this, you'd have three pieces. And you could assemble this corner, and you put it together with that corner, put this one over here, bring it over there. Just like that, three pieces, this ripped up triangle. Make sure you're not putting the parts, like you're putting the three angles from the triangle together, not the parts that you cut out. And maybe ripping is helpful because you can tell that was like part of the inside of triangle. Hmm. I didn't think it would be this tricky. Okay, all right, let's say I got me a triangle here. Okay, if I rip it. Okay, got this angle. Okay, I'm going to put it together with this angle. Right, and I want to put this one right here. Okay, so I'll tear it off too. Alright, so I take the angles from my triangle and put them all together. As long as you put them all together, it doesn't matter where you put them.